break that. Good morning. I want to say thank you to Juma and thank you to the Lewis family and the foundation for uh, giving me this wonderful award. It's a real privilege to stand up here and be part of this. And I also want to thank the BBJ for putting this on. Uh, one of the things they do by bringing us all together is to let us know that we're not alone when we go out there and try to work on good, strong public issues. And it also helps to overcome the cynicism that too often pervades people's view of business. It shows that we do care and we do want to give back. So this morning, I just want to give you a brief story about one of the ways our Bella goes about doing our different causes, our different efforts that won me this wonderful award. And it's about hunger, as Juma said. Why hunger? I think most of you in this room know this. This morning, more than 700,000 people in Massachusetts woke up, children, families, adults, not knowing where their next healthy meal was gonna come. Or knowing that they had to choose between paying their rent, paying their electric bill, or having a healthy meal. Despite the improving economy, this continues to be a crisis we need to attack. So how did Arbella go about doing that? Well, we like to take a multi-pronged approach. By that, we tend to have not only dollars, volunteer efforts, but also public awareness and innovation. And so we've done that in three ways around hunger. The first, as was mentioned, since in the last seven years, we've been one of the major sponsors of the Walk for Hunger. This year alone, we had more than 400 of our employees, friends, and families join us and raise over $100,000 for the walk. Thank you. Um, now, I will tell you uh, that despite the fact that it's 7 o'clock on a Sunday morning, most of the people are very happy to be there and go on the walk and earn those blisters. But to let you know that I still have a lot of work to do around this whole leadership thing, one of the grumpiest people at that walk this year was my 15-year-old son. <laughs> Despite weeks of talking to him about how wonderful a bonding effort this would be, it came down to a parent's best weapon. I bribed him. I told him he could get donuts from his favorite shop if he went on the walk for me. Now I will tell you, the irony of him having to be bribed with donuts to go on a walk for hunger went completely <laughs> over his head. Well, we'll get there one of these days. The second thing we've been doing for the last three years around innovation is funding a wonderful project with our friends from Project Bread and graduate students and professors from the Harvard School of Public Health. And what we're trying to do is the what was called the Chefs in School program, or as what we like to call it at Arbella, trying to save the world one broccoli at a time. If you've ever been in a high school or grammar school at lunchtime, you know how incredibly chaotic it is to try and move all those kids through quickly. And you also know, and I'm sure you hear from your kids, how terrible the food is. So what Project Bread and Harvard is trying to do with our funding is show that you can produce healthy meals that are both affordable and efficient and that the kids will actually eat them. And what they have been doing for the last three years is bringing chefs into urban schools like Lawrence and Boston and elsewhere, teaching the cafeteria people how to provide this wonderful healthy food in a quick way, in a way that comes within budget and within the way the kids will eat it. Now how do we know they're going to eat it? Well this is the beauty of a grad student. They'll do almost anything to get that degree. The Harvard kids literally dig through the garbage at the end of the day to count how many broccolis have been eaten or how many have been thrown away. And they've been able to document that if you do give the kids healthy food prepared in the right way, they will in fact eat it. And we're hoping that this will be a model that can be brought to other schools around the country. The last part of our strategy is probably the most specific because it involves individual actions. Because we believe, as I'm sure most of you do, that the way we're really making the world better is one person at a time, one action at a time. There are over 314 food pantries across Massachusetts providing this free food to people in need throughout rich communities and poor communities. So what we do every year is challenge our employees and our independent agents to both contribute their dollars and their time to work in their local food pantries across the Commonwealth. What we will do is match their contributions two to one up to $500 uh, year over year, and we have raised over a half a million dollars in the last few years. Now you may think $500 doesn't go that far, but based on statistics from the Greater Boston Food Bank, $500 will fund 1,500 healthy meals. So it can go a long ways. So the last thought I just want to leave you with is that doing good can be good for your business. We all talk about this next generation of millennials and how we're going to attract them as employees and customers. A recent, recent Brookings study found that over 90% of these young people say that when they are making choices about where to work and where to shop, that if they believe the company they're looking at has a social conscience and has a program to attack specific social issues, they are much more likely to buy, be loyal, and go to work there. 
So to paraphrase Arbella's tagline, if you're here for the good of your communities, you're also here for the good of your business. Thank you very much.